Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to episode 24 of Knits and Pieces. Uh, we are a knitting podcast coming to you from snowy southwestern Ontario. My name's Noelle and this is my friend Kelly. Hi. Uh, yes, snowy indeed. We thought we were going to make it through the winter without any snow and then last week we got lots and it's still here and we're still getting more. I know, but it looks pretty. Yeah, it wasn't so pretty when I was <laughs> clearing out the driveway to try to get to work but well I don't have to go anywhere so it looks pretty to me. <laughs> so this is our three-week podcast that we regularly schedule and if you are new to us then you won't know that what we've been doing on the off weeks is a live knit chat on our same channel and uh, we generally start the knit chats at two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon that's eastern standard time and I think we're going to keep them going through the winter yeah uh, yeah. And so we'll be back next Sunday for a live knit chat. And uh, hopefully you're not missing getting together today. We're having a lot of fun doing it. It was very scary the first time, but you know, we have two under our belt now. So we feel that we're professional. Ha ha. But anyway, it's so much fun to get together. And we've got some repeat uh, people that are joining the group. And we're having a lot of fun just join growing the knitting community that we're a part of. And it's fun to get together with people that are from all parts of the world and like to join in with what we're doing. Yeah. And we always, we all, like, I find I always learn something or I always find someone's talked about a different pattern that I hadn't looked at. And like, I have to admit when you, when you first talked about doing it, I was not, <laughs> not impressed. But I think just, I was just too nervous of the idea of going live. But it, it actually is a lot of fun. Like, I'm glad you talked to me into it. So it's just, you know, different to see the comments right there where you can respond to them. And a lot of times, a lot of different people have the same questions. So, you know, you might be responding to one question, but realistically, a lot of people had that same question. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's been fun. It so. has it's been a lot of fun. And uh, it's been... Well, it's been more than fun. It's added projects to my queue. It's oh. added yarn to my stash uh, and all of that just in two weeks. So anyway, we hope that you'll be able to join us next Sunday and for some future Sundays. And um, we look forward to that. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. What so, are you wearing today, Noelle? I am wearing my soiree sweater. I'll just stand up a little here and show you kind of what it looks like. It's got pattern going down the sides. I can't move back anymore here, but it comes to about my um, hip bone. Um, it is the Soiree Sweater. It is by Emily Foden. And it was published in the book that she put out that was called Knits About Winter. But it was also featured in an episode of Pom Pom Quarterly. I believe it was episode 23. I did it in Fleece Artist. It's a combination of two yarns. One is their BFL 2.8, which is, um, it's not a lace weight. They call it a lace weight, but I think it's more like a fingering. Mm -hmm. And then it's held with a strand of Zambezi, which was the silk mohair that they used to make. But now, now they make their mohair under the um, Handmaiden brand. But it's, it basically looks like the same composition. The color's called Mink. Um, uh, it was a fun knit. I loved doing like the pattern goes down. I like down that. The side and down the arm and then, then it's got cables and the cable you can see goes down the back of the sweater too and then it's just got all of the edges on it are just like a rolled stocking stitch mm -hmm. um, really comfortable sweater the, I love the combination of the mohair and the bfl and really like knitting it I picked the yarn up when we were on vacation in Nova Scotia three years ago I believe and would definitely knit with this yarn again love it I really like so, the color too. Yeah, thanks. So what are you wearing, Kelly? Well, I had an outfit on and then I changed it because I thought it might be better to save it for St. Patrick's Day uh, for our next episode. So I, by then I was too warm to change into a sweater. So I just have on um, a cowl and it's a really lightweight cowl. It's the Birds and Ships Cowl by Caitlin Hunter. And I bought this yarn when I was visiting with my daughter in BC. So we went to Knit City in Vancouver 
uh, two, well, two years ago, I guess. And this yarn is trailhead yarns and she's an East coast dyer. And this is actually a vegan yarn. So my daughter was really excited to find this booth out of all the booths. And the, so I held two yarns to make this. So the first one is called Fundy Tide and the color is nut job. And that's her vegan yarn. And then I held it with um, a tensile yarn that she dyes. So it's just, it's very, very thin. And she calls that Cabot Trail. And it's a pink color called China Doll. And I really yeah. like the effect of the two yarns together. So it's just, it's really lightweight. So it has a nice pattern down the front. There's also supposed to be, if I can get back far enough, a tassel here. I didn't add the tassel. I meant to go back and add the tassel. And I just realized when I was putting it on today that it doesn't have the tassel. I don't know if I'll put it on now that I'm kind of used to it. Yeah, I like it the way it is. Yeah, I'm used to it this way. So I think I'll keep it. But it was I think um, sometimes if you have a tassel on on a smaller cowl like that, and you've got it inside your coat. It's easy for that tassel to get caught on like zippers or mm -hmm. so like they're not so bad on a shawl that you're basically wearing over top of something. Mm -hmm. But I just find if you've got it where it's going inside something, it's easy to catch it on. Yes. On, oh. so. So I don't wear it a lot, but it's light. It's, it's, it's nice. So it's comfortable to wear here in the house today. Mm -hmm. And I like that you, you had picked up a skein of the tensile for me and I really like it. And it's such a pretty color. I just haven't decided what to do with it yet. I still might do that cowl. Mm -hmm. I do. Like it. So and I have a pretty camel colored yarn that I think would look nice with the pink. It's funny how, like, even when I look at it, I, I don't know how it's displaying on the screen, but even when I look at it, I, I can't go in and find the pink in the cowl. <laughs> like it's, it, it blended so well. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the two cows that we have going. So <laughs> I'll talk about the sock cow and then Kelly will tell you about the self-care cow. So the sock cow is basically ongoing for the whole year. You can knit any pair of adult socks. Um, we will, we're drawing prizes monthly and any pair of socks that you put in there is in there for the whole year. So if you entered a pair in January and you could enter as many pairs as you finish it, just because you, if you've just, you know, it's January, you can still, if you knit four pairs of socks, finish four pairs of socks in January, you can enter four pairs of socks. Mm -hmm. So as soon as your socks are in there, they're basically good for all the prizes for the rest of the year. So we don't just look at one specific month. We go right back to the beginning and pull a prize from all the socks that have been entered to date. So the only thing that can't win is if you already won a prize with that particular pair of socks. Right. But if you've got lots of other socks, you can win with the other pairs of socks that you put in there. Mm -hmm. so, so we won't be doing a prize today because today is February the 21st. And uh, so we will we will be drawing that prize on the last day of each month. And so you'll catch February's winner will be in our next podcast. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So get your socks in there. It's there's lots of awesome looking socks in the the cow so far. What did you say, Kelly? It was 140 142 pairs entered already. Yeah, I know some of them are in. I've got some of them highlighted that I want to do. And it is, there's so many socks in Ravelry and so many sock patterns that sometimes it just helps to see them knit up. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, then you get really enthusiastic about making more socks. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, get your socks in there. And I'm not sure what we're going to have for a prize yet next month or this month, I guess, this month. Next week. But, <laughs> next week, but it'll be something good. Yes, absolutely. And the other cow that we have going is the self care cow. And we are running that until March the 22nd. And the premise behind that is to knit something that brings you joy. And so that could be something for yourself, it could be something for someone else. Um, whatever is bringing you joy these days, it's it's a long winter. So March 22nd marks the end of winter and the first day of spring. And I know I'm looking forward to it. We're not that far away. We've got a month left. The groundhog said we'd have no snow, we have snow. So, <laughs> so we're gonna be drawing for that prize on March 22nd. And the uh, prize that we have for that is a $50 Canadian. Etsy gift card. So that will um, enable you to do some shopping um, at a smaller local business, perhaps, or just a small business anywhere in the world um, and give them a little, <laughs> you well. know, so much, so much stuff on Etsy, like 
pom-poms, fiber, yarn, <laughs> knitting needles, <laughs> whatever. So yeah. you are totally free to choose whatever you want to use that particular gift card for. Yeah. So to get your projects in there. We're wa- we are watching the thread on a regular basis, um, trying to respond. Uh, there is, there's a couple of chatter threads in there. If you have some comments about the projects and then the uh, finished object threads are, are no chatter. So it's just the picture only, but we're really happy to see so many people joining in and uh, <laughs> we've picked up a few patterns along the way. I won't yeah. lie. So <laughs> no, my list just keeps getting longer. <laughs> Yeah. So. Okay, so you ready to move on to FOs? Okay. I have, well, I'll show you my, my socks for the month. I mean, I'm not entering them, but these are the Golden Gardens. Two. Oh, those are nice. I love them. They're um, beautiful. The pattern is by Fairlight Fibers. And I picked up this yarn actually from Leo and Roxy. It was a sock set that they had. I think I'm trying to remember if it was on sale last month or not, but anyway, they had paired it together and it's um, the gray is called dirty flamingo and the coral is called eat your algae. Okay. I'm not sure. So color work on top, a little bit of color work near the toe. And then there's um, a little bit of a rib. That goes down. It's a, a knit three pearls, sorry, knit six pearl three runs down across the top of the foot. Now, when I did the first sock, I think this is the first one. This one feels it's a slight bit looser. I did this on two 16 inch needles and I really didn't like, I knew that it was going to block out and I have blocked this one and it did. It totally blocked out. It looks exactly the same all the way around. Uh, but I didn't like knitting it because, you know, when you get to the end of your needles and then you have to flip over to that second needle, I always felt that there was just a little bit of a struggle on the tension. And once you knit this, then you had to adjust it by 15 stitches. So instead of knitting it like side to side this way, it was actually your seam was down the front and then back. And then you have to shift it by 15 inches to uh, line it up with the foot. So I knew that where I was carrying that was going to end up. Now I knew it would all block out and it did. It, it mm-hmm. was okay. But the, the process was not bringing me joy. So I went online and I ordered a nine inch needle that I didn't have because it's a size 2.75 millimeter. And I ordered that and it came in. So then I knit the second sock using that. Now this one, I can feel that it's a little tighter than my tension was when I was using the two sixteens. So that was interesting to find out um, how my tension would be different or if it would be different. And indeed it is, I can still get this on my foot, no problem, but I have a really high instep. So I will say it's just a little tighter getting this over the, the ball or the arch of my foot than the other one, but lesson learned. Now, what I could have done is followed my own advice that I have on my tutorial channel. And I could have flipped the sock inside out and knitted it, uh, my color work inside out. I didn't do that because I had this false sense of security that I had a perfect tension and I just dove in and in hindsight, I probably should have done it that way. So if I, if I do this type of sock again, where it's an all over color work down the leg, I will for sure flip the sock in and knit it inside out. Now I didn't do the, the toe part, um, even on a 2.75, I just stayed right on. Cause then this is a 2.25. I stayed on the same needle and I knit the toe out and then just did a rounded toe cast off. But I'm really, really, really happy with them. I love the color. I think they're very pretty. This is a thick yarn. Um, it's, it's Leo and Roxy's 80, 20 sock. And it's, it's thick. Like it, it's, there's got some real density to that. So yeah. I'm very happy with those. Now, have you blocked it yet, Kelly? Have you blocked them? I blocked the first one. Okay. But you still so haven't blocked different. the second one that you did on the nine inch. No, I haven't blocked that okay. one. It, felt, it just felt a like, little clear. It should. Yeah. It should. Um, I think it, you'll find it'll stretch out a little bit. It might. It might. Yeah. And I, I probably will. I'll, I will, I probably wouldn't bother to do it if it's just all by itself, but 
I've got right. a couple of other things that are close to being done that I have to block. So I'll probably throw this in and block it as well and just see if yeah. I get the exact same fabric. Because even after blocking and I used uh, soak to do the blocking, you can feel the difference in the yarn. Like this now feels softer and a little lighter, the one that I blocked than the one that I didn't block. It's right. I don't always block socks because I figure, well, you know, they're, they're going to get washed quicker. They're, like I always block sweaters and shawls, but I don't yeah. always block my socks, but I wanted to see, to make sure that this one would come out on the edges where I did the, the, the carrying the yarn across and it did, but um, really happy with them. And this is a free pattern on, on Ravelry as well. I, I definitely have that pattern. I'm trying to look through my yarns to see what would be the best colors to put in it. <laughs> it's pretty. Okay. okay so. My first FO I actually don't have with me. And when we talk about self-care cows, um, these are a pair of knits, mitts that I knit for my granddaughter, Molly. And she just loves anything that you bring over to her that you've knit for her. So she had left a couple of pairs of her mitts at preschool. So she didn't have any to go out. So I, I knit this pair up and it doesn't take very long to knit up a pair of child's mitts. The pattern that I used was tin can knits, world's simplest mitten and it's it's an awesome pattern it goes from like baby up to adult um, and it also gives you various weights now the only thing that I did different and I usually do with all my mitts I did less stitches for the cuff because I like the cuff to be nice and tight mm -hmm. especially yeah. on a child's right so they're not just like slipping it off and then I like the density of the mitt to be thicker too so what I did was I used the stitches the stitch number for the Aaron weight but I did the DK weight instructions Okay. So that, wait, I did the DK, no, wait, I used Aaron weight, but with DK numbers, right? To give me right. a thicker fabric. Right. Yeah. Right. Anyway, right. they turned out, they turned out really nice. She loved them. Kelly, I'll put a picture in of, of the mitts. And I mean, it's so nice when you have little ones like that, that actually appreciate what you knit for them. I know when I brought them over there and she tried them on, she wouldn't take them off. <laughs> so, even though we were still in the house. So, <laughs> anyway, it was nice to see that. So, so that was my first, my second FO is this little headband. I like that. So this is called the dry you headband. It's a Danish word. It's um, dry you is an, an island in Denmark. And that means twisted island. So that's the, the premise of the twist in the headband. Um, the pattern is by Fiber Tales. Um, it's a free pattern. And it is brioche. So it's kind of a really nice if you're going to do um, brioche for the first time, like to do it in one color. And the twist, the only thing about the twist is, I don't know if you can see there, but things look a little off on the twist in the back because when you separate, you kind of have to reestablish um, end stitches, your end stitches, right? Mm -hmm. So the back, it's kind of a little off, but you don't see that anyway. You just follow the pattern and it turns out fine. So this I did with Madeline Tosh Pashmina. This color is spiced wood and it's two strands held together. And this was yarn that I have left over from another finished object that I wanted to use up. And I just thought, oh, that's wanted to do some brioche. And I thought that was a really cute pattern. So that looks more like my color than your color. color. <laughs> I know because it's like it sort of matches my hair. <laughs> I really like it. You know, I love anything that has a goldy color in it, right? Yeah. Well, I do. I like other colors. I just gravitate towards pink, <laughs> but I do like other colors. So anyway, super quick knit. Just it's really good for trying brioche. brioche. Mm -hmm. So like I can see knitting up a few of those for like Christmas gifts for next year. Mm -hmm. And they don't use that much yarn, all sorts of ways that you could do it. I think it calls for like maybe a heavier weight yarn, but you could do it with like a strand of mohair mixed in with something and all sorts of different combinations of yarn to make it. Mm -hmm. So I like yeah. headbands even more than hats. Like, well, for me, I, I wear buns a lot. Yeah. And uh, so the headband is perfect and it keeps yeah. the little wispies that will blow into my face when I'm walking away. Yeah, from and my face. And headband's good too. If you've got a headband on your ears and then you do get cold, really cold. If you've got a, a hood on your jacket, you can just flip your, your hood up over the headband, right? Whereas if you've got a hat with a big pom pom, it's a lot harder to put your hood up. Well, the other thing that I like too is when I'm out walking and if I'm wearing my headphones, I find that the oh, yeah. 
headband keep- really snugs the, head- the headphones in and the sound is even better. So I like that yeah. too. Yeah, good. So do you have another FO? I do. It was a long <laughs> languishing project that needed, oh, very little work done on it, but I just procrastinated the heck out of it. So I finished my Miserina sweater. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm really happy with it. It um, So it's a short sleeve. So in the winter, mm-hmm. definitely I'll be wearing, uh, you know, like a shirt like this under it. So it, and then it has just a little bit of a pattern on the body. Like you can see it's that little waffle, a little bit of a waffle. Mm-hmm. So it was fun. You know, I started with the yoke and it, I love how it has the lace ahead of the color work. And yeah. um, then you get the yoke done. And then, you know, you lose your momentum on the sweater as we do. Because the interesting part is done, right? (laughs) Right. The fun part is over and now you've got to do this. So the pattern, it's, it's, um, the pattern is by Caitlin Hunter and it actually is supposed to be a crop sweater. I made it three, I knit it three inches longer than the finished crop length because I wanted it to be more of a hip length. And then when I blocked it, Uh, I ended up getting a little more length again. So, but I'm happy, happy with all of it. And it was, it's so soft. I, this is Leo and Roxy yarn again, and it's their 80, 20 sock, which strangely feels different than that 80, 20 sock. This just, and then this one almost feels like it has a little bit of um, like a sheen to it as well. It's really pretty. And the colorway is called pistachio. And then the brown is Knit Pick Stroll in Fedora. So. Very nice. Yeah. I know I wanted one too. And I love the little cable between the color mm-hmm. words. Mm-hmm. I think it's got a lot of interesting features to the sweater. So. I know, but I'd be like you, I'd get like the yoke part done. <laughs> and then it would be like, okay, I know that, love that. Really like doing so that. So little, little, like that's the whole length of the sweater. And then there's just a tiny little bit of twisted rib to, to bind off at the end. Um, yeah. I, like I know, but it was in there and, you know, you had to do some sewing. <laughs> well, and then I, I used the, um, the helical method too, when I did the body just because it, it took literally hardly any yarn. This was two skeins. I think I actually even got this yarn when we were in Woodstock. Woodstock. Yes. And it was, um, I think it's a color that they had discontinued. And so I got the yarn out of steel. And then of course the nitpicks, it was just a 50 yeah. gram skein, which I still have some of this didn't even use 50 grams of color. So this is, and you could easily make this anybody that's got two skeins and I had yarn left over even. For yeah. school, so very nice. Very happy with it. Okay. So my next FO is my suburban wrap. I don't know. Anyways, I'll try and show. Kind of hard to show the whole thing, but anyway. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Thank you. This is um, the Suburban Wrap by Hoki Locatelli. It's done in Madeline Tosh Pashmina. So there's that color, the spice wood. I was going to say, I, it's the perfect I, match, it. right? It's the same color. Yes. <laughs> See? <laughs> so that's the spice wood. The purple is purple basil. And the cream color with the flex is modern fair isle. So yeah, I think they go, the colors go nice together. Mm-hmm. It's and I it, like the lace just really opens up when you block it and it just feels like I I mean I like rustic yarns but I have to admit this this cashmere blend does feel really nice was fun pattern to knit because you know like you'd be done a section and then move into the next and then move into the next so you were always changing it up so it wasn't like constantly knitting the same thing I would say that the longest parts to knit were the the long striped sections Mm-hmm. right they're just stocking stitch stripes the the lace was fun the garter stitch was fun just the only the only parts that I found that was kind of like I had to push to get through were the stripe sections but yeah I, I love it it's like three skeins of yarn 
Um, so it's a good size shawl. It's a good width even to put around your shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So I love those colors too. That many shawls that take three skeins of yarn because I, I feel like I'm drowning in them, but it, it actually did turn out really nicely. And like I said, it's got good, like good width. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's nice just to put around your shoulders too. Well, with so much pattern and color changes with the pattern, it's almost like every time you put it on, it's going to look a little different because you're going to hit it at different parts of the pattern as well. Right. Yep. Yep. It's pretty. So, thanks. So do you have any more FOs? Well, we wanted to talk about one that we both have. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You didn't, did you make a cowl or not? Okay. You made the hat. All right. We'll start with the hat then. So we each have hats. Are you putting it on? Well, no, because I have this massive bun, but okay. I'll pretend it's on. How about that? <laughs> yeah. My bun would occupy the entire bit of a slouch. So we both made these hats. Uh, we bought this yarn in Columbus. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. At VKL. Yeah. And so it's a, Oh, I didn't write down what the hat is called. The hat, I think it's called the shifty. Shift along. It's called shift along. Oh, shift along. Okay. Yep. And it's by Andrew Maori. Yeah. So we chose similar skeins and we were at VKL and we saw this yarn. What was this yarn? Cause this is the one I didn't write down. Stone hedge. And the stone, it's a stone hedge. Crazy is the, the blips of color. Right. And stone hedge. Um, let me just see. I wrote it down. Know where I wrote it down, but I wrote it down. <laughs> I think this is their um, their fine like two ply yarn, like a like a merino two ply. Mm -hmm. And so you just pick like a base color, and then the other color, the the crazy color, had all the the shifts in the color in it, so it kind of stands out in the hat. It was, I guess, similar because I think what she originally used in the pattern was the spin cycle dyed in the wool. Yes. But right. the, the vendor had, they had these together in kits, didn't they? I believe. Right. Uh, shepherd's wool. That's what it is. Shepherd's wool. That's right. Shepherd's okay. wool, fine. Cause, because I have also knit, they do have a shepherd's wool worsted, but this was the yeah. shepherd's yeah. wool fine. Yep. But anyway, so they were really fun. So we saw these kits at, um, at VKL and we said, Hey, let's each get a kit and we'll go back to the room tonight and we'll knit the hats. We'll wear them tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so here's what, we, here's what we have to say about that. We didn't wear them the next day because the it's a uh, tubular cast on. And right. after a day on, of shopping- 2.75 millimeter needles. With very fine yarn. And it didn't go well under hotel lighting. And I believe there was a bottle of wine involved. Yes, there was. <laughs> We didn't wear the hats at all that weekend, but we got a good start on them and then we finished yeah. them. And I actually bought a second kit. I think you did too. Did you not? Did you just buy one? Mm -hmm. kit? Just one, but I bought more of the, I bought more of the crazy. So I could just use another, like another four ply yarn and do. Right. And I had bought a second kit. Actually, I think I bought your kit, the one that you have there. Oh, the color? Yeah. Yeah. And then I made that one for my daughter, but I also have, and this was from her. Uh, it's called the shift cowl and I made this one before and I bought this it's gainer homestead yarn and it's very much the same so it's yeah that kind of crazy yarn right with just different bases and well, yeah, I think, well, uh, I think I, they might have been from the same mill too well I think I read what they do is they use mill ends and they just kind of apply them together so you get all the variegation in the color so instead of yarn that they couldn't put together from like a whole skein Mm -hmm. and they're putting it into these and they look they look really pretty they do and I, so soft well, and the thing yeah. is it ended up being really similar colors like I wear these together all the time mm -hmm. and people sort of think I made them together I guess but and my hat matched your coat remember you wore my hat in New York in New York <laughs> well with this many colors you can always find something to match right sure. yep but I made this first and this this was the beginning of our shifty adventures because I did the cowl you like the cowl, then we did the hats, then we did the shawls, 
the night shift shawls. We're going to do more night shift shawls. Yeah. It's I think fun because it doesn't even matter. Even if I had knit the same kit as you, the hats wouldn't mm -hmm. look the same. Look yep. That looks different depending on where the colors show up, right? In your, in mm -hmm. your yarn. Mm -hmm. but, and no, no two skeins are exactly the same either. Right. So it's, well, you it's know what, like, like eventually when I spin fine enough, I could do that with like a hand spun because I'm having fun putting all the colors together, but eventually sometime I'm going to have to organize, <laughs> but not right now I'm having fun. Multi skein. Yeah. Okay. So I have one more FO. Okay, so this. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is Winter's Beach by Andrea Mowry. Um, it is done in the fiber mill Aaron Moore Light, which is a merino cashmere silk blend. Um, the color is called Brana. And at first I thought that the color was going to be dark and you wouldn't see the pattern, but the pattern actually shows up really nicely. It does. It's gorgeous. Oh yeah, I really like it. This is a sample for Little Red Mitten. Um, the only, I didn't make any modifications because I was knitting a sample for somebody. The only thing I did do is needle sizes. Like uh, the needle that I used for, to get the gauge in the double moss, mm -hmm. I might've used that needle size on the arms in the stocking stitch. It would have been way too loose in the stocking stitch. So mm -hmm. I did go down like two needle sizes for the sleeves. And then what I also did was they didn't tell you to do this, but in the, the lining for the pocket, which mm -hmm. is all stocking stitch, but you have the same number of stitches as you do for the pocket, but the pocket's all cabled. So I went down even more needle sizes so that the pocket wouldn't be bulky. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, I went down needle sizes to do the rib for the pocket so that your pocket's not going to really droop when you're wearing it. Mm -hmm. And then one thing that, that I want to say about doing it when I do a pocket and I always want to make sure you get it sewn in so that you can't really see it on the outside. So I decide when I flatten it out where exactly like kind of like what line of stitches I'm going to stitch to in order to get that pocket down. And on a dark yarn like this, so that it's easy to see, I take a contrast color thread and kind of put like a basting line down there. And then you can pin it right to that and sew right to it and then just take those basting lines out after you're done and then you get a nice straight pocket so in. idea mm -hmm. I just find it so much easier than thinking oh yeah I'm on the right row and whatever but I think if you put that in and you can visually see where that line is and you know that you've gone down that line of stitches it's a lot easier to get your pocket in straight mm -hmm. so this has like um when you get to the cuff it's got super long cuffs so that you can fold them up I think there's eight inches of rib at the bottom of those cuffs yeah. <laughs> and this yarn this yarn is amazing this yarn is um it's a DK weight yarn, but there is 300 meters in a 100 gram skein. Ooh. So like this whole sweater is the size four in the pattern and it took four and a half skeins. So that's pretty good. So you've got a nice cabled sweater, but realistically weight wise, it's not super, super heavy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, I'm definitely going to make one of these for myself. Like I said, I actually have this yarn in my stash that I was going to originally do it in, but now I think I'm going to have to get a different color and do it in a different color. Although I you love have that color. color. You have Pardon that me. color. Yeah. I have that color, but I don't want to do the same sweater in the same color, at least not right after each other. So that's okay. I'll find a different color. <laughs> How many skeins of it do you have? I have four. And for my size four would be enough because it was four and a half for the size four. And I would probably do the size one. So yeah, I would have, I would have enough in mine, mm -hmm. but yeah. And I mean, uh, like if that was a little bit short, you could always do your cuffs, like don't have to do the eight inches. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But you could always adjust somewhere through there. I loved, I loved knitting it. The only thing about knitting it in this color was a lot of the time, especially on the rows with the cables, I had to do it in daylight because it was hard to see the darker colors, especially when you're cabling without a needle and you're dropping those stitches and having to pick them up. It's right. a lot easier daylight to see them so so that's it that's it for my fo's i don't even have a pair of socks done <laughs> well you have eight days left to get a february pair done i i, I you're right i do have to get them done <laughs> for february 28th i'll be up till midnight 
So, okay. So we're going to move on to our web. Okay, moving on to whips. What's on your okay. needles? What is on my needles? Okay, well, like I said, I hadn't finished any socks, but I do have some on the go. So this is the Jack Sock, J-E-C-K. And that is by, where is it here? That is by Regina Sada. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry, if you can see in there. It's just kind of got like, um, it's almost like a rib pattern, but then there's like a little bit of design in between that's got the pearl and then a slip stitch. Mm -hmm. And so I just finished, well, the first sock, I don't even have the heel in yet. I really sort of would like to do the heel in that, that color, but I don't have any, but I might be able to get some, so I'm not sure. If not, I've got the licorice from um, Timber Yarns so that'll work with it. Oh, that looks good. Mm -hmm. And the main yarn here is Opal. So yeah, so this is my um, my one, my sock that I have to get finished by the end of February. So I have a week. I have a week to do a heel on another sock. I can do that. For sure. Anyway, so that was the Jack sock. And they will be finished by the 28th. There you go. <laughs> but there's so many things I want to cast on. I just have to finish the sock first. That's the problem, right? It's, you know, we get excited to cast something on and then you're working on it and something else crosses in the stream and you're like, whoa, I need to make that too. It's hard to stay focused. So. And this one was actually, this one was actually, it's not that it's hard, because it's not hard, but every other row where you just plain knit and then you've got the row where you do like your little columns are like purl one, slip one, purl one, which is fine. But when I do it, when I'm talking, I forget. Right. right. And it's, that noticeable. So the one time when we were doing the knit chat, I basically had to rip out everything that I did because I had not kept it consistent. And you maybe couldn't have noticed it, but I, I would have known and my number of rows wouldn't have matched up. So, so I had to rip it out and knit back to where I was. Mm -hmm. so, so what are you working on? I'm still working on my lightweight hipster, but mm -hmm. I'm at I'm ready to start the second set of these. Right. So then once I get those going, then there's just a, like a half section of garter to follow and it's done. So I'll definitely have this done by the next podcast, but I really like the color. I, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see it blocked out. So you can really so you'll be able to see the, the flex. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. well, like even on, on like all her colors on Instagram, I just, gorgeous that's right yeah it's barnyard knits and this is the color winter wonderland which is perfect for knitting this week in all of our snow right <laughs> okay so my next my next whip are my bernie socks and i actually do have one done now it's it's kind of that so i do have one done in there i'm hoping that's going to block out when i block them mm-hmm did the, I did the color work on the circular, like the nine inch circular, and then the plane, I went back to the two needles. If I had to stayed on the circular, you wouldn't have that, but I'm a lot faster on the two needles. And then went back to the circular for this part of the, mm -hmm. the and I've got the second one to the heel. Very so nice. I really those done before the end of February too, but we'll see. So these are the Bernie socks. They are by Stone Knit. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. She just asked that you give a donation to a charity. Uh, yarns that I'm using, two of the yarns are drop stable, the brown and the gray. And then the white is Lion Brand Woolies. No, sorry, Sockies. It's their sock weight brand that sets. It's, uh, I think it's a 75 25. And then the cream color or the taupey cream color is Sandin's Garn Saisu. And then the rusty color is Georgian Bay Fibers Bay Field Socks. So, and a lot of them were just like um, bits and pieces of leftovers that I had in my stash. So I was able to pull them together and not have to buy any, any more yarn to do the socks. Mm -hmm. So that's done, hopefully by next. That? Okay. By next podcast for sure. Right. The sockies that you're using in there, like I think 
anybody who knits socks has that in their stash. And I think the colorway is actually called marshmallow. It's gone, Noel. It's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. They don't make it more? No. Really? They don't really? make socks but they don't make that color. I don't believe I from what I could find, because this came up in a conversation last week with another okay. knitter. And I said, she was looking for a neutral color. And I said, Oh, Hey, lion brand Sockies. It's, okay. you should be able to get it at Michael's. So, you know, it's easy to get right now. And we went online and looked, it's not available at Michael's. And when I looked actually on lion brand, it says it's discontinued. Wow. So I hold have, on to that. And I, ha and I have another ball because in my, in all my Leo and Ro Roxy work socks, like I had enough of the Marl yarn, but the cream yarn that comes with it, I didn't have enough for the number of pairs of socks that I did. So I just used that. Mm -hmm. well, that's I've that. used it in a lot of things. It's that for, great, perfect, you know, creamy base that you can use as a fill in. Yeah. No, right. more. no more. Oh, well. Oh, well, good to know. I will, I will plan on that. That'll make sure that I don't do something that I'm going to need more of it. Yeah, for sure. So I started something last night. Um, this is, well, depending on how you like to pronounce your Latin words, it's either apodi or apodi. It means uh, insect. Okay. That's and very it's just going to be a little fingerless mitt. So it's the Apodi or Apodi mitts by Shara made. And I'm using the, I've, this is from socks that I had made and it's Ravenswood fiber co and it's the M Y N. So it's Merino yak nylon. Okay. And that's where that Brown is coming from, right? The, the yak, the natural color of the yak. And then her color is called treasure hunt. I don't think she has this anymore. This is a skein that I, I got from her a couple of years ago and I made socks. They're some of my favorite socks cause I love the yak, but anyway, this is quick, quick. Like I could have, if I had started it earlier in the evening, I would be done. And then you, yeah. you'd have a pair in no time. Yep. Very nice. I like the pattern in it. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> It kind of looks honeycomb like shape. Well, I'm guessing that's what the whole insect thing is, right? Is it because at first I thought isn't a beehive thing like where they grow have bees? Is that called an apiary? No, that's birds. No, uh, that's an aviary. Oh, an aviary. Okay, I think apiary might is be. for bees. So when I saw the Latin word apidi, apidi, however you want to pronounce it. I thought, oh, that's like a honeycomb. I thought it was to do with bees as well. But when I looked it up, um, actually just says insects. But, but find a little cells like that, too. Like, don't, they, they build little chambers down underneath. Well, maybe. Like ants, I guess, would be little tunnels, right? I don't know. It's, it's just a really fun, quick little pattern. And um, so, again, I'm doing that on a nine-inch circular. Mm -hmm. And it's super quick, like quickity quick. The only issue I had, and so I guess I'm not happy with this. You only cast on 44 stitches, right? For the, for, for the, uh, the wrist. Right. So 44 stitches on a nine inch is just too tight. So I've got some pretty sloppy rib in my opinion. So if I were doing this again, now I'll have to do the second one the same way. Yeah. Just because, but if I were doing them again, I would definitely do the rib on two circulars and then just do the body because the, it's very, very comfortable to work the rest of it on the nine inch. The rib or it's just because you go to stock and stitch or a different stitch pattern. Like, do you increase after the rib? Yes. Okay. Okay. But not so very like much, not very much. Like it's, there's not many stitches. I was a little concerned because well, here's another thing I did. So the pattern actually calls for a 2.75 needle, which we now know I have in a nine inch. <clears throat> but when I did the first, the first row of it, or like the first honeycomb pattern, I thought like to me, 2.75 was definitely too big for this yarn. I think if I were using something that was a little 
like a denser yarn or something with a little more tooth to it, I think it would be okay. Or something more rustic. I think definitely 2.75 would work. But in this case, I was not feeling the 2.75. I felt that that, that slip stitch that forms that loop was just too loose. So I dropped down to a two and a half and the two and a half I think is a lot better. So then I was worried that it wouldn't fit my hand. But once I threw the thumb stitches on, then I, I tried it on. I think I'll have to do an extra, I get rid of my ring, another pattern row uh, from where it says to stop. Cause I think the pattern says just to do two more, two more pattern rows and my hand it's long. So I think I would probably do another, maybe another set of pattern stitches. Cause I'll, I'll want it to come kind of up to here. I like it to sort of hit the middle of my pinky and then you do a few rows of rib before you bind off anyway. But, um, it's a great pattern. And I, I believe she's an Australian designer. So I did pay for, it was a paid for pattern, but, um, she also has socks that she's made out of that same stitch pattern. Yeah. Okay. And I have one more with, it's almost done. So this is my Western Rose by Tia Coleman. Mm -hmm baby cocktail. So I'm, I'm at the neck. So the body's done, sleeves are done. All I have to do under here is grasp the underarms because it was bottom up. And then the neck, there's a choice of whether I want to do a crew neck, a cowl neck, a funnel neck, a turtle neck. So I think the one that's in the pattern picture is the funnel neck. And I, like this is kind of like it's like a turtle neck, but it's a little bit looser. So it's not tight around here, but just mm -hmm. a little bit so yeah, so that's what I think I'm going to do. The yarns that I used are, the cream color is um, Estelle Natural Llama Worsted. So it actually has 20% llama in it. I believe it's 20%. I've got a ball band here. Yeah, 20%. And this is the uh, color 102. So the, basically the colors go up. They're all natural colors. There's only one color that's lighter than this. I believe that color might be called soap. And then the pattern is done in Cedar Brook Farms. Um, it is their blue pearl DK blend. And all that pattern, I said last last time, all that pattern is slip stitch. So it's mosaic stranded knitting. So, and I bought, I'll definitely have that done for next, next podcast. It's very good. One that was a sample I wanted to get it done. So, and again, I had gotten to the point where in this one, it was the same as yours, Kelly, where the bottom's done first with all the interesting stuff in it. And then it's like plain knitting. And it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll get to that. Mm -hmm. so, but now that I'm at the neck, now I'm back. I want to get it done. So, so do you have any more whips? No, that's it. Okay, I have a few um, spinning whips. Okay. So... Okay, and I did show this on our chat last week, but there's my first, my first skein of hand spun yarn. Mm -hmm. So this basically all I had done was I, I um, spun a whole bunch of different little pieces of fiber. And I thought, well, I'm not just going to like it. It was just my practice. I thought, well, I'm going to apply it together and just see what I get. So I'm going to make, I think I'm going to make, I should be able to get like two pairs of mittens out of that for the girl. So that's what I'm going to do with that. Then this is my... Second skein. Very nice. So this is um, John Arvin Devonia. Mm -hmm. And the color is called Snow Ash. And so it's basically one skein. It's, it's like kind of a chunky weight. So I think with that, I'm going to make um, the Pearl Soho Bandana Cowl. Because I think that would look really nice like inside your jean mm -hmm. jacket. Mm -hmm. so I think that's going to do with that. And then I've got a couple of bobbins that I finished. So, of course, you know, I had to get to pink eventually. <laughs> so this is a pink merino. And I've ordered some white merino and I'm waiting for it to come. And I'm going to I'm gonna spin it and then I'm going to marl the two together. Mm. Like a pink and cream marl. And then this was, again, just using up some of the fiber that I got for practice. But you can see I've gotten my spinnings a little bit finer mm -hmm. than a spinning. So this just has a whole bunch of colors, even colors that you can't see on the bobbin. 
And again, I'm going to, I think what I might do with that one is once I apply it together, it'll kind of be marled, but multicolored. And I think I might do um, granddaughter's uh, little mini Montrealer. And then just use like a like a, a pale gray and a cream for the base and then put that marled with all the colors and it just was the pop of color. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, but it's like, it's so much fun. That's why I, I didn't get any, that's why my socks aren't finished because I wanted to spin. So. Well, that's okay, that'll slow you down. I, sh I might be able to catch up with some finished objects. <laughs> Just Kelly, I can't wait till you can come over and try it. I can't wait to try it either. I want to knit with it. I'm excited. Uh, I have to get better before I before I feel like I can actually give it to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I spin every day. So I have my my um, spinning wheel set up, and it's an electric spinning wheel. I have it set up in my family room, and anybody that knows me knows I'm probably not the most patient person in the world, but. <laughs> I can't stand waiting for things. So now I'll leave them like I'll pop toes down and I'll come and spin a little bit while I'm waiting for the toes to pop up. And you still get a little bit done. So, or if I'm waiting for the kettle to boil or if I'm waiting for the oven to heat up. And it's so nice because you can just do that. Whereas knitting, I never want to leave it in the middle of a row. Right. Whereas you can just spin it a little bit and then loop it around. I, I just like loop it around to catch it and you can come back and forth to it. And it's, love it. Well, so. And I think that's how you'll develop your, your consistency too. Like you have to do it every day, a little bit, I, yeah. I think. Right. And that's how you'll, you'll be more consistent and you'll start having fabric that you're, that you're more happy with. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I really am liking it and I do try to make sure that I spin every day. So. Good stuff. So that's it for my wits. Okay. I'm all done for whips too. So I'm pretty sure we may have bought a little bit of something. So maybe we can move on to acquisitions. Okay. Okay. So what did you fail with then? <laughs> okay, well, um, Fulvin Fibers had an update. I'm not quite sure if I had ordered this before the last podcast and I hadn't gotten it yet. I'm not sure, but anyway, so. Ooh, that's pretty. This is their, they call it their Eclipse Fingering. It's a two-ply, it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. So it's a hand wash. It's not um, super wash, mm -hmm. right? So and there's no nylon in it, so it's not sock yarn. So I got enough to do a sweater. It's so pretty. And I think I'm going to hold it with, I've got like um, a taupey colored mohair mm -hmm. that I think would look really pretty held with it. So I think that's what I'm going to do with that. But this color is called Out and About. So it's basically, again, it's, it's a little bit not normally what I buy, but it's got greens and it's got a little bit of pink and peaches and it's got that black thread running through it. And I just, and it's the, the Highland. I really wanted to try that. It feels really nice considering it's like, it's a non super wash, but it feels really nice. So very pretty, very pretty. Okay, so that wasn't all that I bought from them. Okay, I don't normally buy mini, but I just really love the colors in this. Do you have a plan? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I plan that I'm going to knit it sometime. It, it might be like um, like socks, kind of similar to like those sprocket socks where you. You do all the different colors, but you kind of put a little bit of um, the same color in to separate them out, like a black or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But might God, I'm not sure. But I just, I just really like them. And this is all from Cool Moon. So there was their the card, and it's such a little little stitch marker things along with it. And then this was the other, this was the sock set that I got. Oh, that's really pretty too. And this is called Unbelievable. So it's the full skein of the, the one that kind of, it actually kind of looks like what fall leaves look like. And then a little marble mini skein for contrast and heels and toes. Very nice. Right. That was that from them. And they are actually in Barry. 
Ontario. It's Allison and Jessica Hendry. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I really so and they do they do actually sell a couple of their yarn lines at Little Red Mitten. I think they have the slug and then they've got their asteroid sock there. Okay. So did you buy anything? Not as much as you. <laughs> When I got the other sock yarn from Leo and Roxy, the the flamingo and the coral, this was on sale. And, you know, if you're already paying a little bit for shipping, sometimes I think it's just as easy to throw something else in the cart. That's that's not great logic, but that's my logic. So that's all I'm going with. So they had this and it was on sale. I really like these colors. I'm thinking socks to go with jeans. So it's... Um, it's their 7525, so it's a little thinner than the other, but it's the color is Patches to Patches is this one, and then King's Treasure is the blue mini. Yeah, pretty. I love the patches. I did a sweater in the Patches to Patches. It's got the, the gray base and then the pop throughout it, right? Right. So it's got the gold that I like and then the pink that you like, yeah. but I'm just thinking it would look great with jeans yeah. with little pops of color. Yeah. And their skeins are generous. Like they're, I think their skeins are more than a hundred grams. Uh, yeah. I think the dirty flamingo ended up like I've got enough sock yarn left from that set to do another pair of socks. So yeah. that was, that was good. And then okay. a couple of weeks ago when we were doing our, Knit chat, ginger yeah, snap that. First, What's that? Wasn't that the very first one? The first. The very one? first one, yeah. Ginger snap that was having a yarn update with their pixel sets, and there was a set that I really liked. So we were lucky enough to have uh, somebody that was joining in with the knit chat, Rachel, that offered generously to hop on their site and do a little shopping for us. So I don't really know. Does that count as shopping if somebody else pushes, pulls the, pushes the button? I know. <laughs> so I got the patina set and I wanted Noelle to have a set too. So it comes with two of the Pixel yarns and then they give you the solid. Um, so you'd have to choose a toe and a cuff. So I don't know which way these are going to go. I feel like I might do the turquoise at the, at the toe. So you've got that set, but then. And I also ordered the, this is called Pixel Pixie. Mm-hmm. Which is but really you know, pretty too. It would be really nice to make the three granddaughter socks out of. Oh, that would be fun too. But I have, I'll have to figure out how to do it so that I get the colors in, right? And I mean, it doesn't matter if they don't have all the colors in it. Right, because the colors are in first enough that it'll still work. Mm-hmm, it's so cute. But yeah, so that was our, our little online, you could call it an online purchase because we were online talking. Right. <laughs> anyway, okay, I also ordered some Plutolope. Um, I had to order, I needed a couple of more bobbins for my spinning wheel. And so I ordered them from Yarn Canada and I wanted to, I wanted to get to the amount that you got free shipping. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I bought three of these in the, the Plutolope. So I'm going to, I've got enough to do a sweater. I don't know what sweater I'm going to do yet, but I just really wanted to try it. And I've got a really pretty blue mohair that'll look perfect with it. So I might combine them. So is it, it looks like a roving, is it? It's, it's an unspun. So you've got, I guess you've got to be like pretty gentle with it when you're pulling it, but it's supposedly the fabric is quite sturdy once you've knit it. So I've never knit with it. I actually have yarn. Well, I don't know if you call it yarn. Roving, very similar to this that I got ages and ages ago, like 25 years ago when I was making from knit. Right, right. Very similar to this. And I actually, I've got a light gray and a cream. And I think I could do, if I wanted to, I could do a yoke sweater and maybe put one of those colors up at the top. So I haven't decided for sure yet. So, and then the last thing is that some of this um, Regia um, Merino Yak. Mm -hmm. 
So and Noelle was very generous and bought me a skein to try too. So we both have matching. We'll have matching, um, matching, matching pixel socks and matching yak socks. Yes. Well, you know, it's it's uh, interesting because we get so uh, grabbed in by colors and patterns and self striping yarns. And I had said this back in January. I wanted to do more socks this year that are patterned, right? So that you know, you definitely need uh, a more solid color. But this is interesting. I don't think the camera will pick it up, but it's really lightly marled. I would say, like you can definitely see that it's it, it's 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 not tonal. It's definitely not tonal, but it's just very lightly marled with two similar colors. So I think the stitch definition is going to be really good on this. And it's kind of like the the, the yak colors are always kind of like a bit more subdued. Right. Was there? They're like a taupey brown base, right? And but it's soft, it's really soft. And I bet you it's gonna be a good wearing sock. Like I know when I when I used this last time in the socks, that's mm -hmm. wearing really well. I wear them a lot. I've, I made them probably two years ago. I wear them a lot. I wash them a lot. And uh, so I think this will this will go really well too. This is, it's got 14% yak in it. Okay. Um, seven yards, but I think that would make like a really nice textured sock, either like cables or lace or, because I think that you're right, the pattern will really show up in it. I think so too. Mm -hmm. And then I have just one more skein that I got from Ravenswood. You know, she keeps posting these colors and, you know, so here I say, oh, I want more solid. And then she posts this and I jump right in. This one's called Cutie Kraken. Look at the colors in that. When you sent me the pictures of that, I'm like, oh. Isn't that pretty? That's so pretty. So yep. that's definitely gotta be, you know, a single pair of socks or I don't know, maybe something else, but. You could do a one skein shawl. You could do a one skein shawl. Yeah. It'd be really pretty to put that with a, like a taupey colored mohair, mm -hmm. right? But anyway, that's it. that was it for me. That was enough. Yeah, I really have to stop buying stuff. I've got to knit more, buy less. <laughs> well, if I could just find a way to clone two more of me, they don't need to do anything else but knit. They just need to knit. Just sit somewhere and knit, and then I'll do everything else. But, you know, then I could maybe keep up. Yeah. So, and I've done a little bit of sewing, not a lot. So there's going to be some uh, bags in the shop this week. This is, um, this one is going back to the last update that I did the oh. cozy cabin. This one was on the cutting, I'm not cutting, cutting room floor, the cutting mat. And I didn't get it finished in time for the shop update. So I, it's the only one that I have left in this fabric and it's the wide mouth zipper. So when it's open, it's actually open like a big yarn bowl. And so it's quilted, the whole bag is quilted. So there's just one of these and probably won't last long, but that'll go into the shop probably a day or so after um, this podcast is up, which should be, you see, today is Sunday, should have the podcast up Tuesday or Wednesday, so the shop update will likely be the next day. And then I have another fabric that I have a, a collection of bags in. I love this fabric. I might have to keep one. I don't know. Look at this. Oh, that's so pretty. Little birds on birch trees. And it's a gray base. And then I've used, um, I'll flip it this way, a gray fabric. It's like a fan fabric. But I love this print. I wish I had bought more of it than what I did. But it's so, so cute. So I have that in all the sizes and accessory pouches to go with. And then there may be another set that's finished by then as well in a different fabric. But that's pretty much it. And the table is, I know. I've covered everything that's on the table. Yep, I think that, I think we've talked about everything. So, so you can find me on uh, Instagram and Ravelry as the Tangled Stitch. And my Etsy shop is called the Tangled Stitch Shop. 
And there's also a tutorial channel that I run on YouTube and it's called the Tangled Stitch. And um, when I do post tutorials, we generally talk about them here in the podcast because they usually pertain to a technique that we're doing in a specific knitting pattern. So I'll try to post those when we have, when I have something to show. And Noelle? On me on Ravelry as and Knits and Pieces and on Instagram as Noelle Knits and Pieces. And just to let you know too that um, underneath our regular videos, there are there is a link and it will take you to our website, which is knitsandpieces.ca, I think, but it'll take you right to it. Um, show notes for the different episodes are there. And um, we try to link everything to our project pages in Ravelry. Um, if we talk about different makers of different yarns, we try to put their websites in there so that it'll take you directly to that website. Um, yeah, and if you've got like any questions or just either get a hold of us through um, Instagram or underneath the video or through Ravelry. We kind of check everything fairly regularly and we do try to reply to you all the comments. We love getting comments. We love talking to you. Um, and I guess we just want to remind you too that next Sunday we will be having, so that what date is that, Kelly? The 20th? February 28th. February 28th, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we need to check that too because I'm not sure, it won't be February, but eventually the time is going to change too. It will always be Eastern Standard Time. Except if, if we're on daylight savings time. We're still Eastern Standard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> It'll be two o'clock. <laughs> yes. It'll be two o'clock in Southern Ontario. So just check what the time is in Southern Ontario and we'll be there at two o'clock. <laughs> hey, I'm not a scientific person. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, we just like to say thank you to everybody for watching us, for subscribing, for joining in our knit chat. We're having so much fun doing this, and it's so much nice. It's so nice to connect with everybody. It is. I, I'm loving being part of this community that's developing and growing, and we're getting regular people that are checking in with us on the knit chat, and uh, it's just fun. You know, I wish we could all get together somewhere in a coffee shop and do this in person. But we're trying to make it as inter interactive as possible. We use a different format than this. So um, if, you, if you haven't joined our knit chats, um, you are able to chat with us. It's, uh, I, I use a different platform. So And sometimes I'm pulling comments up onto the screen. We're asking questions onto the screen. So hopefully um, it's the next best thing. So you know, bring your, your cuppa of something good and your knitting or your making of any kind because we do a lot of other making as well and we would love to see you there but we are having so much fun doing this thank you making the winter go by faster like it's already almost the end of february mm -hmm. so anyway. yeah and we've only been doing this together since october october was our first podcast together um i stepped in for noelle's daughter jacqueline and it feels like we've been doing this forever. And um, the technical brain strain is real. <laughs> we had to learn so much to, uh, to be able to bring these forward. And there's a real appreciation for um, definitely what podcasters do to get these episodes out to people. But we just enjoy it. It's really yeah. fun. Yeah. And I feel like we get, we're definitely getting as much back as we're putting out. Like, like I love reading the comments. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, like the, they're from all over. So. Yeah. Sorry. Looking forward to when we can be back together though, instead of a split screen. I miss my friend, Noel. I'm just going to say that publicly. I miss Noel. We, <laughs> we've done a couple of parking lot drop-offs if we have to exchange prizes for mailing or, or yarn sometimes, but it's just it's not, not the same. It's not, we have, like, because, I mean, we can't even feel each other's knitting. No. <laughs> no. That's a thing. Anyway, hopefully, hopefully at least when the weather gets a little better, we'll maybe be able to have some outside time. Absolutely. Okay. Well, happy Sunday, everyone. Happy making. Happy making. 
Stay oh, safe. Okay. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Yes. Take care. Take care. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you.